Nakivo provides a fully scalable and powerful multi-tenancy solution that allows up to 1,000 isolated tenants to share a single instance of Nakivo backup and replication. This functionality is useful for large organizations that need to compartmentalize their business units, branch offices, departments, customers, or any other entity. Multi-tenancy also gives managed service providers and other types of backup as a service or disaster recovery as a service vendors an opportunity to deliver data protection services to their clients. In the multi-tenant mode, each tenant can access their own environment through a self-service portal. The portal allows tenants to perform all the data protection tasks as well as conduct various recovery operations. At the same time, each tenant functions as a separate, isolated unit. This means that tenants cannot see or access the environments or jobs of any other tenant. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Nakivo Backup and Replication in the multi-tenant mode and how to complete the initial configuration of tenants in this mode. Nakivo Backup and Replication can be installed on Windows or Linux OS, on a NAS device, or deployed as a virtual appliance. A virtual appliance is Linux-based and is considered to be the fastest as well as the most reliable and secure way of solution deployment. So I'm going to walk you through deploying a multi-tenant virtual appliance. First of all, you need to download the VA file, that's the .ova file. For this, go to the Nakivo homepage at www.nakivo.com and click Download Free Trial. Fill out and submit the free download form and then you get the list of available installation files. The file we're interested in is located under the VMware Virtual Appliance Full Solution category. So click the tab to expand it, navigate to Multi-Tenant Director and then click Download. Once you have downloaded the file, log in to your vSphere vCenter with the vSphere web client and select Deploy OVF Template from the Actions menu. First, select the Local File option and then click Browse to upload the VA file you've just downloaded. Click Next. On the Select a Name folder page, specify a name for the virtual machine and a target location for the virtual appliance. Click Next. On the Select a Computer Resource page, Select the resource pool in which you would like to deploy the virtual appliance and click Next to review the template details. Make sure to pay close attention to the description you see at this stage as it provides you with the virtual appliance login credentials. If you plan to expose the virtual appliance to the Internet, it is better to change the default credentials. Let's proceed to the next step. If you agree to the End User License Agreement terms, select the I accept all license agreements checkbox and then click Next. On the Select Storage page, select the data storage location where you would like to keep the virtual appliance disk. It's recommended that you set the virtual disk format to thin provision. Click Next. On the Select Networks page, select a network to which you want to connect your virtual appliance. Click Next. And on the last page, Review the configuration summary and click Finish to complete the deployment. Once the deployment is complete, you can start the virtual appliance and launch the web console. After successfully powering on the virtual appliance, you can access the options which allow you to further configure network settings, security settings, change time and the time zone, and monitor your system performance. The Manage Nakivo Services option allows you to easily increase the backup repository space, start and stop services, access the API console, and update the product to a newer version. You can log in to the Nakivo Backup and Replication interface by opening a specific URL address in your browser, which includes the virtual machine IP address. This URL address can be either obtained from DHCP servers or manually configured by navigating to the network settings of the virtual appliance. After typing the IP address in the browser, provide the default port, which is 4443. When you open the Nakivo Backup and Replication login page for the first time, you'll be prompted to create a new user account. 
This is the master admin account that will be used to access your instance of the application. Fill out the fields in the form. The first thing that you see here is a notification that you have successfully entered the multi-tenant deployment and a short explanation of how to get started. You're directed to create tenants and run the initial configuration. Once you're done reading, you can either click Learn More, which will redirect you to the multi-tenant deployment page in the Nakivo Help Center, or click Got It to start the initial configuration of the multi-tenant director. The first step is to discover the environments we would like to back up. To do this, go to Settings, then Inventory, then Add New. In my case, I will be adding the vCenter server on the cloud provider's side and on the customer's side. Select the VMware vCenter or ESXi host option from the drop-down menu. Let's provide a name for this configuration. That's MSP vCenter server, as well as the IP address of the vCenter server. Then provide a username and password and click Add to add the environment to the Nikivo Backup and Replication Inventory. The MSP environment has been successfully discovered, so now I can see what's inside the environment, including the number of hosts and VMs. Now let's discover the ESXi host on the customer side. Click Add New, select VMware vCenter or ESXi host. The Add New VMware vCenter or ESXi host page opens. Let's enter the display name, Customer1 ESXi, the IP address, and then provide a username and password. Click Add to add the ESXi server of the customer to the inventory. For the next step, navigate to the Transporters page. You can find information about what Transporter is and how to add transporters to your environment. Click Got It and proceed with the deployment of transporters. Here, I have an option to add an existing transporter. This would require me to go to the Nikivo website and download one of the transporter installers. In our case, a transporter can be installed on the existing machine or deployed as a VMware vSphere appliance. Now you can add a transporter that is installed as a service by providing the IP address or add a transporter that is deployed as a VMware vSphere appliance by selecting the corresponding option from the drop-down menu. Alternatively, I can deploy a new transporter automatically right from the Nikivo Backup and Replication UI. After you click Deploy New Transporter and select VMware vSphere appliance, the solution will automatically suggest the location where your new transporter should be deployed. What I need to do is just confirm the data store and virtual network and provide a name for this transporter. Since I'm deploying the transporter in the customer's environment, I'll name it Customer1-Transporter. You can click More Options to provide the network configurations and select the transporter settings. You can enable Direct Connect for this transporter. This allows an MSP to access the remote resources of clients without the need for a VPN connection. In this case, the connection with the Customer 1 environment will be established via a single port connection, which is 9446. Click Deploy and the deployment process starts. It would take a few minutes to have the transporter deployed in the customer's environment. Once the transporter is successfully deployed on the customer side, I have to go back to Inventory and add it to the existing integration of Nakivo Backup and Replication with the customer's environment. And here, I would need to enable an interaction between the Nikivo Backup and Replication multi-tenant director and the customer's ESXi while the transporter has Direct Connect enabled. All I need to do is select the Use Direct Connect option and make sure that the right transporter is selected. Then click Apply. It takes very little time for the integration to be updated. Direct Connect has been successfully enabled. Let me go back to Transporters so I can add a transporter that was pre-installed on the MSP side. To do this, click Add Existing Transporter. Select Installed Service. Enter the IP address of this transporter, then click More Options to add the transporter name. Let's call it MSP-Transporter. Then click Add to add the transporter to the Nikivo Backup and Replication multi-tenant interface. 
In my case, I would like customer one to back up to the on-premises backup repository and send the backup to the MSP side. To do this, I have to create two backup repositories. To do this, go to the Repositories tab, click Add Backup Repository and select Create New Backup Repository. In my case, I would like to store backups on the machine on which the Nakivo transporter is installed. That's why I select Local Folder. Alternatively, I can use CIFS or NFS shares. Click Next. On the name and location page, add the name of the backup repository. Select the transporter from the assigned transporter drop-down list that will be used on the customer's side. Previously, I created the directory on the machine on which the transporter was installed on the customer's side and provided the ownership of this directory to Nakivo Backup and Replication. Let's copy the path of that directory and paste it into the Nakivo Backup and Replication UI. Click Next. On the Options page, you can set up various backup repository options including data storage type, compression, deduplication, encryption, scheduled repository detaching, and so forth. Click Finish to start creating the backup repository. In a couple of minutes, the backup repository will be created on the customer side. Once the backup repository has been successfully created, you can find more information about this repository by clicking its name. Now I will create the backup repository on the MSP side in the same way by going through all the same steps of the wizard. After performing all the configurations on the master tenant level, go to the dashboard and click Create New Tenant to create a new tenant for your customer. The Tenant Creation Wizard has five steps. Tenant, Inventory, Transporters, Repositories, Users. On the Tenant page of the wizard, provide a name for the tenant. Additionally, you can add a label for the tenant. For this purpose, you can create the tags you want to assign to the tenant. For example, the label can be based on the service level agreement. You can also allocate a specific amount of licenses to the tenant by specifying the number of workloads and or Microsoft 365 users you want to assign to the tenant. In case the perpetual license is installed, you can specify the number of sockets, physical servers, or workstations. Oracle databases and or Microsoft 365 users that will be assigned to the tenant. This way, you can limit the number of licenses the tenant can use to protect their internal environment. Optionally, you can provide the tenant's contact information and change the tenant logo. Now, let's move to the next step. On the Inventory page, you can assign the inventory items to the chosen tenant. To do this, click VMware Infrastructure and select the customer's environment. As for MSP, we can assign the specific host to the customer so that the customer can use this host for disaster re recovery purposes. Click Next. On the Transporters page, select Transporters to be assigned to the tenant Customer 1. Select the transporter that's on the customer's side and the transporter which is located on the MSP side. Note that multiple tenants can use the same transporter without accessing each other's data. Click Next. On the Repositories page, you can allocate backup repositories that will be used for VM backup and recovery. In our case, the customer will run local backups in their production environment and perform a backup copy job to move the data from the Customer1 backup repository to the MSP backup repository. So let's select the two available backup repositories. And for the final step, I can create a local user for Customer1 and assign it the self-service administrator role. Enter the username, user's real name, generate a password, and click Add to create a local user for Customer 1. Finally, click Finish to complete the tenant creation process. As you can see, the tenant was successfully created. Now you need to provide the credentials for Customer 1 so that the customer admin can continue configuration or we can access the tenant from our side and start creating backup, replication, and recovery jobs. In this video, 
I went over how to set up the multi-tenant mode in the Kivo Backup and Replication. I have also covered the process of tenant creation and configuration. To learn more about Nakivo Backup and Replication, go to nakivo.com and find out how easy it is to protect all your virtual, physical, cloud, and SaaS workloads with an all-in-one solution. If you would like to try Nakivo Backup and Replication in your own environment, download the 15-day free trial with no feature or capacity limits.